So lately, one of the things that's been driving this stock market rally is Wall Street becoming very optimistic about a rise in productivity. Remember the productivity miracle with Alan Greenspan? There's a thinking out there that maybe it could carry not only the economy, but our stock market much higher. And on that note, we get the, the January jobs report out on Friday. And the focus will be, at least for me, on participation and wage growth. But it really won't tell us much about worker happiness. Now, before you say that doesn't matter, according to Gallup, unhappy workers cost the global economy almost $9 trillion, our economy almost $2 trillion alone. I want to bring in Bianco Research President Jim Bianco. And Jim, you know, I guess workers have always been unhappy, but it seems that these days they have more reasons to be unhappy, like they don't like the company's climate change policies or the food in the cafeteria is not gluten-free, you know, so, or it's not my dream job. Everyone said I've come out of college to get my dream job. Just your thoughts on this, this really malaise, this, this darkness of unhappiness in our country. Yeah, I think it. what you said at the end there, it does reflect a bigger malaise that people are unhappy at their jobs because they're unhappy with the direction of the economy. They're unhappy with the direction of the country. So it kind of feeds in to all of that. But I think the bigger issue here is we tend to forget this. When you hire a manager at a company, the, there's job number one, and I don't care what industry, what job that is to manage other people. And if they're if they're not good at managing other people, that is going to lead to unhappiness. And unhappiness is not just, oh, like you said, you know, we don't have enough gluten free stuff in the cafeteria. It might be I'm required to collaborate with my coworkers to come up with something creative to help the company make more uh, revenues. And that's not a good environment mm -hmm. for me to do that. It can be something a little bit more substantive that, like that. But yes, this, this is a big problem. So and I think it is a bigger problem that is of of the larger country. So so you, you've been a big proponent or you've talked a lot a, bit, a lot about the work from home becoming a permanent feature in the office. Uh, there was a report last week that remote workers now bear the brunt when layoffs hit. I, how about that dynamic of, you know, sort of working from home and, you know, being the first one laid off? Yeah, you know, there's two things going on with remote work. Um, productivity is down because people are working from home. But that has to be offset with I could give back billions and billions of dollars of office real estate I don't need anymore. And when you when you say, okay, the productivity is lower, but then the office real estate goes away and that cost comes down, it actually washes out at the end. It maybe even comes out slightly ahead for employees. Uh, as far as remote workers being the first to go, yes, that's not surprising because remote workers also have probably more mobility than anybody else. They can go find another remote work mm -hmm. job. It's all part of that dynamic of changing nature of work since the pandemic, that this is something very new that we're trying to get our head around. So, you know, for those who are trying to build confidence, to your point, get their head around this, there was a, uh, a YouGov survey uh, that was taken. It says 12 percent of workers have been on the toilet during virtual work meetings, 21 percent in the 18 to 29 bracket. So do we put that on the efficiency or lack of productivity? <laughs> I mean, you kind of it's like you can kind of get lost those, those, at home, like, you know, walking around the, out the house with your laptop. Right. I think those numbers might be low, by the way. And uh, <laughs> that a lot more people are doing things they shouldn't be doing with the cameras off. But in all in all seriousness, this is the biggest challenge of remote work. You know, you have a, two things you have to do at your job. You have things you have to do, write reports, answer emails, update spreadsheets. If you have a service sector job that can be done remotely. And then you have people you have to collaborate with. And what we found is all those things like updating reports and spreadsheets, you're better off doing that at home because you don't get distracted every five minutes. But this collaboration with employees, Zoom isn't really cutting it. Right. It's better than not Zoom, but that's the biggest challenge we have with a remote work environment is figuring out how to do better collaboration. And hopefully that doesn't mean just sitting on the toilet. All right. Hey, before I let you go, <laughs> uh, we're talking about jobs. So you, you, what are you looking for? What are you expecting on Friday with the labor report? 180,000 is what's expected. 14 of the last 18 months, the number has beaten expectations. So let's start there. Are we going to have another beat this month? And 180 seems to be the benchmark we're looking at. And of course, we know the jobs market moves the needle more than anything else these days. Jim, thank you so much, my right. friend. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, folks. So I, I personally, I want to go back.